Okay, what's up everyone? So today I'm here in a core Walkerville, actually right there is the Wilster Manor uh, at one of my client's property who is doing a burr project of a five unit building converting into a four unit to make it legal and pulling all his money out after the renovation. So I'm gonna show you the property. I'm gonna take you, walk you through the numbers and you will meet the owner, uh, get to know more how he purchased and all those details. So stay tuned. Madhu, first of all, thank you so much for your time. So, um, as I know you for a long time for now, which is like four months. Yeah. 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 So you purchased the property three months ago and you finished like renovations in five units within three months. And you, where do you live? I live in Toronto. You lived in Toronto and you came down here yeah. for the... So first of all, what's the secret sauce? How did you manage these renovations? Well, the renovations, actually, we were kind of lucky. Like we got a contractor, like he was kind of self-managed, like, you know, all that we had to do is some follow-ups. Mm -hmm. So we were actually lucky that way. So, um, you know, every time we had questions, like we would just go back to him and like kind of follow up every now and then. And he pretty much finished everything on time. So you got lucky because did you look for other contractors? How did you choose him? Uh, yeah, I did actually uh, meet a couple of other contractors, but you know, when I um, called on their references, like I got to know that, you know, um, they do a little bit of work here and there and it takes a long time to complete the projects. So uh, I was not in a situation where I could just let it go on for a long time. And yeah. also, um, you know, it's not one or two units, it's a total of five units that we're yeah. looking at. So if you wanted to get it down, down on time, so... Uh, so yeah, and then when I, I actually did go and see the current contractor working in on site, like you know, in one of his uh, mm -hmm. job sites, and we were actually really impressed with what he did. Okay. So so then, hold on for a second there. Sure. So what he did is pretty much he had a requirements. He got the references. He interviewed a few people, and he did check the contractor's current working sites. So just keep a note if someone if you're complaining about. Hey, I couldn't find a good contractor. That means you did not uh, interview as many people as you're supposed to do. And you did not take time to call the references. You did not take time to go drive down. That's the way you can find a good contractor. So did you think, do you think you found a good one finally? I think so. I'm yeah. actually pretty impressed. So uh, we are actually working on you know, a couple of other projects in Toronto. So yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And um, so it's a five unit building. And how much did you spend on the project? Uh, so on the renovations itself, it's probably around 90 to 100 grand, I would say. Including uh, the material? Including the material. Okay, 90 to 100. Um, like, can you break it down a little bit more? Is it like per, per unit basis, pretty much like 20,000? Yeah, yeah, somewhere around that. So actually, uh, it's, a, it's a five unit building, but mm -hmm. it's a legal fourplex. So one of the challenges that we had mm -hmm. was like, you know, we bought it as a five unit building, but we didn't really want to keep it as a five unit building because it's a legal fourplex. Yeah. So at this time, like we gave it a little bit of thought and we decided to convert one of the one bedroom units mm -hmm. and combine that with the other unit that was yeah. not legal and made it a three bedroom unit. Yeah, that's a good point because, you know, especially if it's non-conforming, especially it's always a liability. Um, that's what I would recommend if you have something that is non-legal, try to convert into a legal unit. Um, did you come across any challenges, especially managing the contractor because you're out of town, you're pretty much like four hours away from here. So how did you manage that? Well, as I said, like we would actually drive down pretty much every other weekend and see how the work was progressing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how. And then I would call him and bug him and ask him for pictures all the time. And yeah. He, at one time, one time he was like, hey, "You should probably hire your own per photographer." photographer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we had to bug him a lot, but at the same time, like you know, as I said, like he was self managed so mm -hmm. he's he was, he's really good. Yeah. So definitely make sure. And you drove down pretty much every... Every other week. Yeah. yeah so, sure. you know, if you're wondering how, um, d d like, especially people who are working full-time, they would say, no, I already have a full-time job. Are you 
free or just oh, staying? absolutely not to be honest like i have days of you know like um, nights actually i should say like until 3 30 at work like even mm-hmm. like a couple of days ago I was so you're working full time absolutely yeah so he's working full time <laughs> so he's working full time and on the side this is an investment he's driving down whenever he gets the time so you know that's where it takes commitment right is if you really need it badly that's how you will commit and you know how did you find this deal you obviously <laughs> <laughs> no but there is also so, like you have a you have done few things that i want to bring up because you came to me said with a clear intention i want to buy this thing and we started to look and you did your analysis like you had an excel sheet you did all your numbers that's based right. on what I, you asked me all the valid questions what's the market trends what's the location look like yeah. so that was a big thing that i what i don't see from many people because especially when they think investment when i when they are relaying talking to another agent or anyone they think that he will be bringing the deal right so that that's really a good thing that you have done but um you know one of the biggest challenge which i know but not many people doesn't know is you were planning to buy a smaller building but you found this five unit and you had a biggest challenge which was financing that's right so you couldn't get the mortgage what did you do how did you managed to get it well uh, we were kind of over leveraged because i already have a couple of properties in toronto so mm-hmm. um, you know and having property in toronto is not cheap yeah. so uh, yeah we were kind of over leveraged so i had to bring in a partner mm-hmm. and uh, and i was kind of determined to get it done so um, i approached my uncle and he agreed so uh, yeah. yeah so that's how so you pretty much he reached out to most of his inner circle because that's where you will find the real quality partners if you're wondering you know you don't have money or you don't have finances to set it already just go reach out to your inner circle tell what you're looking to do that's what exactly you have done i'm really impressed with the the way you uh, you were doing when we were like you know looking for the property you had a clear details so obviously when you're presenting that details to your people who are half interested when they see that passion from you when they see that commitment from you automatically they will agree into it so do you think it's fruitful so far what you have done oh absolutely i'm i'm really really happy can you yeah, run down a little so bit uh, on your on the numbers of the property how much sure. did you get? uh we paid 300,000 for the mm-hmm. property and now on the renovations as i said it's about 90,000 90, mm-hmm. grand and uh, because of the recent you know surge in property prices in and around windsor so i think uh, it's probably valued at around 500 yeah. thinking so actually it's more uh because i just looked up uh, a property that is sold in this neighborhood fully redone duplex sold for 560000 oh there you go so yeah. it's a fourplex yeah so and also another point like what which location is it um it's actually a, a core walker yeah walkerville yeah that it's actually a prime location yeah we are just uh, facing towards uh wilston manor that's right so it you cannot go wrong with a nice location and uh, you know one more thing like that i really um you know want to bring on especially for someone just to help some newbies like you know who are sitting somewhere around the wall uh you chose windsor city right so why did you choose windsor you have so many other cities nearby toronto yep. instead of them why did you came here because i know one of the things like for any kind of an investor like it's a property prices right so in mm-hmm. windsor when you look at the property prices like it's much lower than toronto and in and around toronto right like london is kind of saturated well i shouldn't say saturated but i i wanted i mean i like windsor better mm-hmm. than london um and also another thing was like i knew that the rents were like you know, most of the properties were under rented mm-hmm. so um there was an opportunity yeah. right and, and also like uh, a lot of the landlords like you know who are actually um seniors like yeah. they 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 didn't really want to manage or didn't mm-hmm. want to do any kind of an improvement yeah. all that they wanted to do was like you know just get rid of the yeah. property get whatever they can and mm-hmm. you know just be done with it yeah so that that's kind of an opportunity because like for any kind of a newbie like you know now like there's actually like a great opportunity where you can go mm-hmm. um get the property for a good price and like you know 
do some improvements, then yep. do a burr, like, you know, pull out the yep. equity, like, after a while. So, like, you know, so, so that was one of the reasons. And again, like, um, I came across your uh, video on YouTube. Actually, I think it was Facebook um, mm -hmm. in, in the group. And then, yeah, so then I was like, yeah, this is it, Windsor, right? And at that point, I was still kind of debating whether it mm -hmm. should be London or Windsor. And then, uh, and also like, uh, you know, after talking to you yeah. for the first time, I felt comfortable and I was like, yeah, so, you know, that's how I decided it was yeah. going to be Windsor. Actually, you brought up some really good points, you know, value adding, burr strategy, pretty much what you have done with your project is, is burr, 100%. I'm like very confident at this point, you will get all your money out. Right. If your market, va if, if the property appraised for 500,000, which I'm very confident with, so you're going to pull 80% loan to value, which is 400,000, which is what you invested into the yeah. project. Yeah. And also another point that you mentioned, what many people are afraid is when they see the property, even for example, this property, when it was listed, I'm talking from my side now, what happened, how we got the deal. The property was on the market for a while and many, actually many people, are scared of now because it's been on the sitting on the market and now their question is why was it sitting because five unit building in a great location for 300 they listed for 340 340? yeah 340 or 330 somewhere around that and the reason like we digged more we looked into the income was really way below what was it like five hundred dollars per per unit yeah. per unit which yeah. was like one bedroom and in this core walkover area probably you can get like at least 800 to 900. So there is a big opportunity there and the units were, as you said, all the units were outdated. Now, brand new kitchen. <laughs> it's it's nice kitchen, nice washroom, flooring, painting. Yeah. What else have you done? Have you done any major uh, improvements on the project? Um, well, yeah, we pretty much, we did everything, right? Like, so the flooring, as you said, like the kitchen washrooms mm -hmm. and uh, laundry. So yeah. the, there was no laundry on, on site yeah. at all, right? So we did a two, so two of the units actually mm -hmm. have ensuite on, laundry. Okay. So, uh, and then we were also, we putting a coin laundry in the basement mm -hmm. because the other two units would obviously need some. Yeah. Um, you know, no, it's somewhere to do their laundry. So. Mm -hmm. We get to put the yeah, that's the that's a really obvious one. Yeah, and, and I think to your point, I think a lot of people were scared to get it because the tenants were here for a long time, yeah. right? So that was another thing. That's actually a very good point. So how did you get rid of tenants? Yeah, it, it wasn't easy for with a couple of tenants, but mm -hmm. uh, somehow we kind of like you know spoke to them and we mm -hmm. had to make it was really cash for keys yeah with a couple of them okay can you elaborate a little bit more sure. because that's really really important point especially when the property is rented below m below market rents and getting the tenants is the hardest thing yeah what even like you know when you started to start the process right it was brand new right. like have you done this before no it was my oh. first time ever going to and talking to someone and asking them to you know so like, what hey. did you ask so um yeah, with one of the tenants, like, uh, you know, we, we went and yeah, actually it's the very same unit that we're in right now, mm -hmm. right? So we came and it didn't really go well for the first time. And we were like, yeah, um, you know, we sent our N11 form, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, for them to vacate. Mutually agree. Yeah, mutually kind of agree. Mm -hmm. And they had to leave the apartment kind of in a, uh, form. And so that way they kind of had a heads up, like, you know, that yeah. we were going to come and talk to them about, um, you know, uh, yeah. asking them to leave, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, what I didn't do is like, I didn't walk over to the apartment and hand them over with N11 because I didn't want any emotions, right? Yeah. Because like, if you walk to someone's house who's been living there for like eight years or nine years and say, hey, here's your notice, leave. Yeah. You know, then there's all kinds of emotions that come up and like, you know, I didn't want any kind of argument. So what yep. I did was I sent, actually you helped me drop a couple <laughs> of them. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we dropped off the N11s and, uh, and that way, you know, when we were actually coming to talk, like they knew what exactly we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and, and two days or three days down the line where like, you know, they would, their emotions would have come down or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of easy to talk. And, and the first thing that the tenant, you know, that was in this building said was like, oh, no, we're not going out anywhere. We're staying mm -hmm. here. 
right? Yeah. So then we kind of started the conversation. I said, like, why you have to leave and, like, you know, what else we could do? Like, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of started having the conversation and we also showed them, like, you know, there are a lot of things that are not right in this building that mm -hmm. we have to take care of, right? So we kind of, like, had conversations, you know, a few times and kind of convinced them mm -hmm. and then said, okay, you know what, guys, like, if you are going to leave, like, you know, here's what we could do to help you out. And it worked out, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, don't be afraid to ask, right? That's the thing. Um, if you want to go through the legal process, you don't know how it's going to, like, it's a legal process. You did, what you did is a legal process, which is N11 forms, making the tenant sign the N11 form with a mutual agreement. So you give them some cash and they agreed on to it. They're happy to move. You're not like offended them or, you know, I mean, uh, screw you, screw you. It's, it's like super friendly way to communicate that that's that's the best way to get the tenants out and you know if that doesn't work out then you can go do other different things but thank god it worked out for you very well and, and that's what i would recommend anyone looking to do burr for projects like this start talking first if that doesn't work out go do other things so with that, first of all, I really appreciate for your time and I really appreciate for your business because it's yeah. pleasure working with you and I'm, I'm damn sure you're, gonna, uh, you're not going to stop here, right? Oh, absolutely not. I'm into it now, so... Yeah, so <laughs> it's an addiction. Yeah, it is. So yeah. are you planning to get your next one soon? Yeah, yeah, pretty soon actually. Sounds good. As soon as you pull your money out. Yep, exactly. Awesome. Right. Yeah, with that, Okay. Really good luck Thank with you. your future. Thank you. Thanks for all your help, by the way. Thank you. Yeah.